And welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. All week... <laughs> all week, we've been talking about Russia's invasion of Ukraine, except for last night, when we took a brief break to talk about the president talking about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. <laughs> last night, we were live, so tonight, I'm dead inside, but... <laughs> I'm glad we put the effort in to make the live show because it was a pretty good night for the president, unlike for some of his critics. You see, the D.C. area was put on high alert after a group of truckers threatened to swarm into the Capitol to protest Biden's speech and vaccine mandates the way they had in Canada. Organizers estimated there would be upwards of 3,000 attendees, but by the time Biden's speech began, only 12 rally-goers <laughs> had actually assembled. 12! Well, mm -mm. Mm -mm. and most of them just wanted to see truckers so they could do this. <laughs> Take a look at how empty this rally was. <laughs> you could have driven a truck through the place if any had shown up. <laughs> Part of the problem might have been the rally's organizer, former MMA fighter and authoritarian wiggle, Kyle <laughs> Sefchik. Take a look at this video Sefchik released of his own stirring words. All right, you guys, thanks for being here today. All right. So, a few reasons we're here today. Uh, first being that many of you are lost on your way to the Air and Space Museum. <laughs> uh, some of you were court ordered to pick up trash in this parking lot. And the rest are our moms who are driving us home. <laughs> Why is he using a microphone? There are 12 people there. <laughs> he can just do it with ASMR. Hey, everybody, hi. Shh. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Despite crippling financial sanctions and Russian dressing being pulled from the shelves of your local Kroger, <laughs> the invasion of Ukraine continues. Russian forces have captured their first city and intensified their criminal attacks on the defenseless civilian population. But fierce Ukrainian resistance continues to deny the Kremlin the easy victory it had anticipated. In fact... <laughs> In fact, a Russian military convoy stretching 40 miles long on a roadway north of Kyiv appears to have bogged down, so you know those troops must be bored as hell. <laughs> I spy with my little eye <laughs> something that starts with T. <laughs> Is tank? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Is tank. <laughs> Is always tank. Overall, the Russian troops are facing food and fuel shortages and are gripped by low morale, leading some to surrender en masse. Evidently, the Russian Marine slogan is Semper Bai! <laughs> and um, bye. On their way out, they're not picking up after themselves. Take a look at this video of Ukrainian troops finding abandoned Russian armored vehicles. Sounds like a great opportunity for Ukraine's number one automotive charity, 1877 Tanks for Tots. <laughs> Donate your tank today. <laughs> Thank you. There's good news for everyday Ukrainians looking to pick up a certified pre owned vehicle. The Ukraine government says citizens don't need to declare captured Russian tanks and military equipment. <laughs> for tax purposes. Well, that is great news, because we've all been there. <laughs> you come across an abandoned Russian T-72 B-3 tank, and your first thought is, how is this going to impact my taxable income? <laughs> that, that, my friends. <laughs> That's when you call the rogue military tax accountants at the CPA team. <laughs> I pity the fool who doesn't itemize his deductions. Not every... Got to work on my Mr. T. I got... It's been a long time. It's been about yeah. 40 years. Mm -hmm. Not every Russian soldier has walked away. One video being shared on Ukrainian channel shows a captioned Russian soldier being given food and tea and being allowed to FaceTime his mom. Snacks and a parental phone call. The Ukrainians are under attack and they're treating their invaders like homesick campers. Yes, we know you're far from home and it, and it is very scary. Why don't you give me your gun, okay? You, you, you take this yarn and go make an invasion bracelet over there. <laughs>
Dimitri's already started on one. Go, go hang out with Dimitri over there. You guys are both Russian. Ordinary Ukrainians are also defiant, like this grandma who spoke to CNN. Let those Russian come here, she says. We are ready to greet them. How did you learn how to make Molotov cocktails? Google помощь. Google helped, she tells me. You Googled it. Of course, she says. Ugh. Googling Molotov cocktail recipes is always such a pain, because first you have to scroll through a whole blog post. As a busy mom, it can be tough to find an explosives recipe that works for the whole family. By the time I get Kaylee and Braxton home from soccer practice, I just want a 30-minute way to vanquish the armies of darkness. Thank goodness for my Kosori air fryer. <laughs> then there's this woman from the city of Konotop. Am I saying that right? Konotop, who cursed the Russians literally. Do you know where you are? It's Konotop. Here, every second woman is a witch. Tomorrow, you'll no longer be able to get your penis to stand. <laughs> wow! Oh! 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 Wow! The Wicked Witch of the Eastern Bloc. I think we have some more footage. Get you, my pretty, and your little dong, too. <laughs> nearly, nearly the entire world has united in this condemnation of Russia. In fact, one of their last remaining allies is Belarusian strongman Alexander Lukashenko, seen here dressed in the pubes of his enemies. <laughs> Got some very old enemies, evidently. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately for Putin, Lukashenko might not be the sharpest turnip in the basket because yesterday a reporter tweeted out this photo explaining that Lukashenko was addressing his security council, showing planned troop movements, infrastructure targets, and a plan to divide Ukraine into four parts. This guy is worse than the dumbest Bond villain. As you can see from this map, Mr. Bond, I have detailed plans to take over Ukraine. Promise not to memorize it. I will now leave you to a very slow and unsupervised death, and I will just leave my cell phone right here. <laughs> even, even, even worse. Thank you. Thank you. Even worse. Thanks. Thanks. Well... I'm an actor. Even worse, the map suggests that Putin is considering attack on Moldova. That's right. An invasion of Moldova is being... Moldova. <laughs> the... Nothing, Joe? Thank you. Wow. Yeah, well, I was that... laying bets downstairs if you were gonna do that. I was like, okay. The sanctions continue to rain pain. Visa and MasterCard have blocked Russian banks from their networks. It explains their new slogan, Visa, it's everywhere you want to be because you don't want to be in Russia. <laughs> in his... This is old school. This is 1981 out here. In his speech last night, Biden took the fight directly to Putin's cronies. The United States... The Department of Justice is assembling a dedicated task force to go after the crimes of the Russian oligarchs. We're joining with European allies to find and seize their yachts. You hear that, oligarchs? The feds are looking for your luxury ships. They've made a game of it. Yahtzee! <laughs> Turns out... No, I don't want your pity rim shots. Turns out there's a little section of the Constitution that allows Congress to grant letters of mark and reprisal and makes rules concerning captures on land and water, which means the government can empower private individuals to legally seize foreign vessels. And there's no better private individual for this job than Dog the Boaty Hunter. <laughs> Thank you. The long swim. There's a long, long swim right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In order to get around Putin's internet censorship at home, people around the world are letting Russians know the true nature of this war by posting Google reviews for restaurants in Moscow and St. Petersburg with the information about the events unfolding in Ukraine, with messages like, your president started a war against Ukraine. Your government is lying to you. Please stop war against your Ukrainian brothers. Give peace a chance. And this is a no-win situation for all. That last one is actually the slogan of the Moscow Taco Bell. 
We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Andy Serkis and Russia expert Fiona Hill.